Hello everyone, um, this is PG Semi-Auto Magic, and I've had a few requests to talk about software setup for Moose Clock PC and uh, Moose Clock on your tablet. So I'm going to assume you've been able to uh, get Moose Clock on your tablet. Um, there is a PC version. If people request it, I will release that. The PC version is what I'm going to be using today. Um, there, uh, So you've got the... Um, the clock app, for want of a better word, and you've got the PC side, the streaming app. And uh, you can see those two here on the desktop. Um, the clock app was built in Unreal. I'm an Unreal developer um, in my day job, so that's what I found easiest to use for that. Uh, Moose Clock itself needed a little bit more under the hood, um, so that was written in um, C Sharp. Uh, quite a while ago now, actually. Um, now, this is relatively battle-tested software. Um, I've been streaming with uh, Moose Clock PC for probably three years now. So if you have seen the WTC in 2019 or the um, uh, Southern Ontario Open for three years plus, you've seen this running. So um, what I'm going to go over today is um, we're going to first uh, run Moose Clock. I'll run you through all the standard features of that. And then um, I'm going to show you how to set up um, Moose Clock PC, go over the features of that guy, and then we'll go into OBS and do a quick scene. Um, hopefully I figure out how to either put timestamps in or something so you can jump around if you need to. Um, and we will discuss just a little bit communications protocols, um, just how that pertains to actually getting it running. So let's start with Moose Clock. Um, the Moose Clock app is designed to be very simple, and on the PC, the buttons are ridiculously large because, of course, they're meant to be touched. Um, quit does what it says on the tin. Uh, your settings is where you'll set up your network connection, maybe your key binding, stuff like that. And start will drop you into the clock itself. So we'll start out with your settings. Um, the settings page right now uh, allows you to change the time, um, the IP address of the Moose Clock PC, the port that it's running on, and allows you to rebind the controls. Uh, rebinding the controls is easy, doesn't work particularly well on the PC side, but you click on bind and then you press the button and it will bind it to that. You might wonder why these are all gamepad. Well, if you have either purchased or built using the uh, videos that I've made uh, your own um, physical buttons for Moose Clock, uh, those are all based on a actual gamepad. So that under the hood, that thing is just a gamepad with a lot of specialized buttons. So that's why you see gamepad there. So we'll go over the four settings. They're very simple. Player one time is in seconds. So 60 minutes is 3,600 seconds. Player two time, again, same thing. Uh, the IP address, uh, by default, it's set to 127.0.0.1. Uh, that's easy for me to do for testing. Um, because that is your local computer. So if you're running the two on the same computer, that's the setting you need. Most people will be running it on their tablet to their desktop PC. If you're running on a Windows computer, you can uh, click on Start, then Command, then type in the line IP config, and next to the IPv4 uh, address, you'll find the address of your machine. And it'll always be broken up into four chunks. Um, for most people, it'll be 192.168.something.something. So for example, it'll be 192.168.1.24 might be your computer. Um, a small subsection of people will be 10.0.0.something. So 10.0.0.5 or something like that. Uh, usually, if you see one that says 1, uh, that is not correct. That will be your router. Um, your router generally lives at the bottom or top. So for most people, their router will be 192.168.2.1, and their computer will be like 
168.0.5 or something. So uh, you can leave the port the same unless I personally have told you to change that. Um, Moose Clock PC is listening on 220, but it could be that you have multiple iterations of Moose Clock running. So if you're, say, the WTC and you're streaming five tables and each table is commentated and you need um, a clock for it, you have probably gotten a special version from me that has different port numbers for each table, and that's when you would change the port there. So that's everything in the settings page. Uh, let's go out of that and we'll uh, drop into the clock. Um, now, the clock, very simple. It's designed to have almost no, nothing on it that uh, is like disturbing the ease of use because you gotta remember this is what the players are seeing. So we don't want it to be in any way a problem. The best clock for the players is the clock that they're used to. And since we can't give them just a plain chess clock, we've got to give them something that's very easy to read and something that they instantly can use. Most people will probably use this without um, the physical buttons to get started with be while you're waiting for your physical buttons to arrive or because you're going to make your own or you don't actually care. You're just streaming with some buddies and you want to just be able to tap on stuff. So what I've made it is I've made it um, relatively easy to uh, use in with touch uh, settings instead of just with the buttons. So uh, to do that, um, you'll just tap on your time and it'll start your buddy's clock just like a real chess clock. So when you tap your side, the other side starts. We can do the same thing here. Tap it, it starts over here. Um, there is a pause button up at the top. So if you tap on pause, you'll notice that the timer start to blink. While it is paused, you can reset and that will reset everything back down. Um, so Control points and rounds, if you notice when I hover over them, they actually have two buttons on them. If you top, tap on the top, it will change the numbers up and down. Uh, same thing with your round, and it will loop over after um, seven. Uh, so that just gives you the ability to you know, tap up quickly, or if you only have a round up button, uh, most of the versions of the uh, buttons themselves only have a round up button. They don't have a round down button. Uh, we found that most people after the first game are able to figure out not to tap it like seven times. Uh, control points, uh, we made sure that the buttons, the physical buttons have an up and down because it's very often you'll be counting up control points and then you'll be like, oh yeah, I have six and, and your buddy will be, no, no, no. Remember, uh, I had a guy in this zone. He's behind this house. You only get five. So uh, we made sure to put that on there quickly. So uh, one thing that we're not seeing here and that I'll show you in just a second is when uh, the clock is connected to uh, the PC version of Moose Clock, you'll get a little green light that comes on up here. And that lets you know that the clock has connected to the PC and is streaming the time. So um, that's basically it. You can just hit back and then quit out. So uh, that was um, the Moose Clock that you'd see on your tablet. As I said, if there's enough interest, I can release the PC version, but you really want a touch screen to make that work. So uh, next I'm gonna start up Moose Clock PC. Um, so Moose Clock PC is made up of a set of windows here. The main window is this guy here. And this is the window that if you close it will kill everything else. Uh, if you close any of these separate windows because you don't care about them, that's fine you can in the setting or uh, you can respawn the windows. Oh, this is the old version. Um, the older version doesn't have respawn windows. The version that you're using should have another setting in here that says respawn windows. Just stops you having to close it and restart it when you are, uh, when you are done. So let's get this up um, and I'll start a moose clock that you'd have on your tablet just so you can see 
that little green light come on up in the corner. So that means that we're sending our time to Moose Clock. And if I flip over to the Moose Clock main window, you can now see that the time has been filled in with uh, the time coming from uh, coming from the main clock. And you can see it counting down there. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is we're just going to leave this guy running and we'll pull out the other windows. So uh, in the settings, basically these settings here are just to change uh, your keying. So when you are placing this into OBS, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making um, bars and then keying out the color in the background. Normally we key on pure green, which is what um, I've currently got set for the background. And that's what comes as default. Uh, it's the same as sort of a green screen. So if you need um, another color, you can change the background color, you can change the color of the text, or you can change the font. So we'll just get out of there for right now. So uh, this is, as I said, the main window, but if we start to bring up the other windows, there's the player one control points. And I'm just gonna put these windows next to their um, analogs on the clock so you can see what's going on. Uh, we'll go down here to player two time. It's there. The round number is down here. And then player one time, which you'll see counting down here. So that gives you an idea of what's going on there. So I am just going to uh, close down Moose Clock here and we'll just deal with this guy. So as I said, um, each of these is receiving from the main clock the time or the CPs or whatever. So now I'm gonna show you how to put these into OBS. So let's just grab a copy of OBS over here. So we have that fun inception that happens when you're on the same screen as OBS. Whee! What we'll do here is we'll create a new scene. Um, we'll just call it scene five. Um, and let's put something in the background here. We'll just put an image in the background. Browse for something. There's a random image. This was, I think, a layout for the WTC in Poland. Doesn't matter what it is, it's literally just a background image. So uh, we're going to imagine that this very strange thing is the table that you're working with. Um, and you want to uh, set up the time. Um, actually, it might be better to use... Yeah, no, this should be fine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start bringing in the different windows. And it's always going to be the same. So uh, we'll click the plus and we'll do a window capture. And we'll call this, uh, you know, player one time. And down here, you can see um, you've got a listing of all the different programs running on the computer. Uh, each of these is a running, uh, running, uh, running window, not just the same because these are all from the same program. So we want to pick player one time and there we have the beautiful time and we'll hit OK. So uh, this by itself would be really kind of horrible and annoying. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that out so we just have the time. So what you're going to do is right click on the uh, source that you've made and click on filters. In here, we're going to click on the plus sign to add a new filter and we're going to do a chroma key. Uh, and we'll just give it a name, um, green screen. Hit OK. So the key coloring uh, we're doing is green. Uh, this is the sim similarity, so how similar to green it is. Now you notice the text is anti-aliased. Um, 
So that will allow us to play with the smoothness um, and the similarity to get just the text. So um, we, we know we don't want to lose the buttons in the middle. Um, we have spill reduction, which will reduce the, the sort of greenness around the outside. And uh, this will just, these are just the general opacity. Um, usually I end up with something around here-ish. Um, but feel free to play with these. Also, uh, something that you can do is you can, um, you can get the, you can select a custom color. So if you put magenta as your background or whatever, you can put that in. Also remember you can use a custom font, uh, in, um, uh, in moose clock and that way you won't get as, uh, distinct in anti-aliasing. This is just the standard one. So we're going to hit close and you notice that now instead of uh, us having a big green square around it, uh, we have just the time. Now in uh, OBS, what you can do is if you hold down the Alt key, um, you can clip uh, or you can, yeah, clip out an image or a, a source without scaling it. So normally what would happen is you drag this and it would get bigger or smaller. If you hold down the Alt key, uh, you can clip it out. So what that means is that instead of having that entire source be displayed, you can only display the time. And so now we've got, oop, now we've got the time here as a source. And this is why you always lock your background. There we go. This is always a pain in the butt to grab. Um, so then we just put in our time. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing with all of the other windows. So we just do the same thing. Window capture, um, player two time, hit OK. Go down here, we'll pick player two time, hit OK, right click on it. Add a filter, filter, add, and then again, we're going to do the chroma key. Okay. And then you can put your settings as you want and then hit close and then move it down and then shrink it down, cut, cut out just the time. And then we can move that over to here. So as you can see, um, what you would normally do is you'd have some kind of pretty graphic along the bottom of the screen and it would say like player one time and then player two time over here and you just drag the uh, window set the uh, time to either side. So um, that once again uh, gives us uh, how to set up Moose Clock with OBS. So the last little thing that I want to share, um, and we'll just leave the same stuff on the screen for right now. Actually, let's move this out of the way. So um, Moose Clock uses, as you saw, port 2020 to communicate with your PC. Often your PC uh, will have a firewall on it, or it should have a firewall on it. So uh, what you should be doing is creating a rule to let it through. Um, you can do this in a couple of ways. Um, if you are on a Windows 10 machine, uh, you can just use the standard um, Windows Defender firewall. You can right click on uh, the firewall and add a new rule and you can say this uh, protocol is allowed for this program. Um, you can just turn the firewall off. Like if you're at a convention and you don't have any access to the outside world, it's just uh, this computer and the tablet on a Wi-Fi network that is coming from the computer or maybe a router that you brought with you. Um, then you can just turn your firewall off. That makes it easy. Um, the reason I'm not showing you how to do it is because 
Uh, many people have their own firewalls installed from McAfee or Norton or Panda or Kapinski or whoever. Um, and each one of those has a different way of doing it. But, but what you need to do is have port 2020 open um, to get data into your computer. And if you have that, it should work fine. So uh, thanks everybody for watching uh, this mess. Um, uh, my name's uh, PG Semi-Auto Magic. Um, you can, if you have more questions, you can get a hold of me on most of the places that War Machine happens, or you can send me an email at pg.semiautomagic at gmail.com, uh, or you can just leave comments under this YouTube video, and I will try and find the questions in there and answer them. So thank you again, and hopefully we'll see you later.